Excellent. Council will take a five minute recess and then we will move on to item number six, a rezoning application for 958th Street. Back to order. Um, we are on item number six, a rezoning application for 958th Street. And I will invite our planning team to the table to uh, walk us through this application. Welcome. Thank you. And good morning, Mayor Helps and Council. My name is Mike Angrove with Development Services. And today I will be presenting a rezoning application for 958th Street to allow the use of storefront cannabis retailer. Moving through the context slides, the property is located on Yates Street across from the Harris Green Village, cent uh, Village Shopping Center, which houses the London Drugs and Market on Yates. This slide shows a view looking at the front of the property from Yates Street. There is an existing storefront cannabis retailer that was in operation prior to July 28, 2016. A view of the neighboring property to the east, an 18-story mixed-use building is currently under construction and a view of the property to the west of the Manhattan residential building. The OCP designates the property within the core residential urban place designation within which commercial development along Yates Street is envisioned. The downtown core area plan designates the property as residential mixed use within which active uses at street level are encouraged. And finally, this slide displays the existing storefront cannabis retailers within 200 meters of 958 Street However, none of the properties there here have been approved through a rezoning. The property at 851 Johnson Street, which is the upper left star, uh, has, is the only property shown on this slide that has a rezoning application submitted to the city. The proposal therefore complies with relevant policies and staff recommend that council consider supporting this application. Thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Council, are there questions? Yes, Councillor Thornton Joe. Uh, Thank you. One of the questions I have is on the report um, for community consultation. It says that the time of uh, writing, no, no comments have been made from the Victoria Police Department. Um, and I know that sometimes it's the comment that's made for uh, liquor establishments. Um, my concern is that I would, uh, I think as we move forward, so this is new grounds we're, we're starting on, and I would, uh, before I can approve any of them, I would like to know that I get a letter from for every application from the police, even if they send a letter saying we have no comment, um, just to make sure that for some reason uh, the paperwork wasn't received or the, the staff that was involved didn't have a chance to respond. So I'm wondering, uh, and so I'm not talking specifically to this maybe application, um, and maybe the discussion then needs to be after this, but I, I, I want to go, as we start moving forward on these, um, uh, how do I uh, request or, or see whether we can get a report from each, or regarding each application from the police if they have any concerns? Because right now we're just getting no comments been received. I think that we should address that in camera with our police chief. I did okay. forward your email to him and he has some uh, comments for council that are uh, more appropriately do appropriately dealt with in yeah. camera because it, it has to do with law enforcement. So okay, and, if, and that's fine. I, I guess I didn't uh, think of doing it in camera because I'm just I think a process um, of, of how in the reports that we have uh, it added. So I, I didn't see it as in camera as for this actual question. Right. But the, yeah, it would be in camera that the, this application deals with land use and mm -hmm. anything with the police would deal with law enforcement. So, uh, Mr. Johnson, um, when uh, Acting Chief Manic returns from his uh, holiday, can you um, make sure that he shows up on or, or Mr. Coates um, on in camera agenda to address council on this issue? Great. Thank you so much. And, uh, and my second question to him, I guess it would be Mr. Uh, Coates. And, and so once again, I don't know if I can ask if this is uh, 
Um, sure. Yes, this is a time for questions. Go ahead. Um, I noticed that this building currently and some other buildings are in, in town, uh, the sign does say like cannabis dispensary. Is it in our bylaws that um, the wording that it's not supposed to say um, cannabis or marijuana or I forget what our sign bylaw states and what can be what can be used for wording? Mr. Coates? Uh, through Mayor Helps, um, two things. First, um, advertising of, of the product is not to be visible uh, to those underage, under the age of 19, I believe, or 18. Um, secondly, that um, the sign, it's, the stipulations on the signage otherwise are that there's alpha and numeric numbers, so there's no um, sort of product-like um, information contained on the sign, so it's words and numbers. Um, and any sort of product advertising can't be displayed to minors. So um, for council's benefit too, that um, in order for any business license to be issued uh, for, for any operation of this nature, that full compliance with every regulation that the city has instituted would be required up front before the license would be issued. So if there was any um, not issues of non-compliance about signage or anything with a current application, they'd have to be remedied before the, the city would ever issue the business license. Okay, so so currently the sign is not in compliance, but uh, to get a business license, they will have to comply. Through the mayor, and I believe that, uh, you know, if that's the case specific to this one, I, I'm not aware that the sign is, is not in compliance, but if it were not to be in compliance, it would have to be yes before a license would be issued. Okay, thank you. Those are my questions. John. Thank you, Councillor Lucas, and then Councillor Alto. Thank you. Um, I wonder if we could go to the last slide that shows the 200 meter. Um, I did have a question from a uh, business, um, and I believe Councillor Thornton Joe asked this the, the last time, but I, I, I need it to be explained again. What their question was is why the circle doesn't go the other way into the downtown versus this way. How do you determine where that 200 meter goes from the site that's the star there? Like, how come you didn't go the other way? Mr. Tinney? So the, the site is actually the uh, the blue box. So in the middle of the circle. So the 200 meters is is a radius that, that extends from the, the boundaries of the site or through the center of the site uh, around in, in all directions. Yes. Uh, yes, go ahead. <laughs> uh, just Please. to clarify, it's from property line to property line. So um, I do calculate via the property line, but the circle is just easier as a visualization. Thank you so much. Councillor Alto, question? Yes, I'm sorry, I couldn't find it in the report, but when you reference the uh, top left star there, uh, the one that's on Johnson Street, and you, I think you said that uh, there is a pending application from that location. Uh, when was that uh, submitted? Um, through the chair, I don't know exactly when it was submitted. I believe 958 was the first one that was submitted to the city. So Johnson uh, Street was submitted after this one? Yeah, and through um, through our process, permitted would technically come in as soon as council has approved um, one of these applications. And since none have technically been approved through a public hearing, none are permitted at this point in time. Um, so the radius wouldn't even apply at this point. This is more of informational purposes. So just to clarify then, two applications come in a day or two apart. Um, because one is more complicated than another, it takes a bit longer to reach this table. Does that have an effect on how they're both considered? It does, does the one that is a bit more complicated, I'm trying to figure out all of the different aspects that prevent one, um, that allow one to prevent another from coming forward, essentially. So there are a number of uh, reasons why the process for one may take longer than the other. So just for clarity, I've just looked it up in, in, in regards to these two applications. The one before you today uh, was submitted about a month and a half before the, the other one. Okay. Um, but to, to answer your, your question more generally, there are lots of reasons why uh, two applications might come in uh, or sort of move forward the, the process at different times. Okay. Um, the responsiveness of the applicant. Right. So as questions are asked by staff and the ability for the applicant to get that information back, mm -hmm. uh, in many times, you know, in a number of applications, 
applications. We will sometimes request additional uh, information and the applicant will go away for months and sometimes they'll go away, you know, in some large development, sometimes the applicant goes away for years. Right. Um, and so that is that is one por portion of it. There is levels of complication, all of that, uh, that, that can come into effect. That said, um, the the intent of the policy is pro to provide guidance for councils. So mm -hmm. if uh, if an application is approved and the 200 meter distance comes into effect for those in the surrounding area, there is nothing stopping council from taking whatever information that they they consider to be pertinent uh, to approve another one within that 200 meter uh, barrier, whether it's because of a timeline lag or any any uh, situation or, you know, of all of the other considerations that council can take for a land use application, you can override the 200 meter um, policy direction. It's simply a guidance for staff in terms of what we recommend or don't recommend. But in that context, I guess my, my curiosity is that when the clock starts running is when they actually submit as opposed to when you write your report, for example, or some other benchmark in the process. So when they submit puts them into the queue. Right. Right. And then each successive discussion with them and each request for further information, right. we Moving can place them, them into the queue. the queue. Ultimately, though, the policy doesn't come into effect until something is approved. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Councillor Lucas. Sorry, I just wanted you to expand on that a little bit more, um, just to make sure I'm clear. So those, the three stars um, that are there, they are going through the process at the same time. That. Just one. So the one at 851 Johnson is the only okay, one that is currently applied. Say three of them sure. have, and they all come forward to you, and the first one is the one that's in the blue box. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't prevent the other three from moving forward in the system. Mm -hmm. And so when the one that's in the box is approved, then that nullifies the other three. They ha you're, they're told, sorry, no, no. We, we don't tell them anything. Uh, we, what we would tell them from staff's perspective is that based on the policy, we cannot recommend that they be uh, that they be approved based on the policy. That said, they can still say, well, I'd like to take this to, to council and I'd like council to decide on this because I feel perhaps in this case that there are some uh, other extenuating circumstances that they feel um, 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 provide council with with an opportunity to to override the the policy. That's you know as again council overrides its own policy um, um, you know on a number of different occasions, and that's that's council's prerogative. The policy doesn't fetter council's decision making; it provides guidance for council and and guidance for staff in our recommendations. Thank you. So just to be perfectly clear. Let's just say once 950 is approved, should it go forward to public hearing, should it be approved, you would have to recommend for all of these other blue stars not approve to our to this table, and then this table would decide. For the most part, unless there, again, unless there is an extenuating circumstance. So in, uh, I'm trying to... Uh, I'm, I'm speaking speculatively here, but say that we there don't are, speculate. Don't, no, don't but there speculate. are there are other situations where technically a school falls into a two hundred into the two hundred meter boundary, but it's really the edge of the playground or, or sorry of the play field of the school, but the actual building of the school is four hundred fifty meters away. Okay, so staff may look at that and uh, through a, a common sense lens and suggest that perhaps this one may be. Uh, and so I, I'm not speculating in this situation, but there are opportunities where staff may come forward and say. You know, based on the realities here, this one meets the spirit of what the pol policy is looking for. But for the most part, uh, the, the staff's recommendation would be dictated by the policy. Great. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Yes, Councillor Thornton, Joe. I'm sorry, and I have to ask again. It's okay. Everyone keeps apologizing before asking oh, questions. No. Don't, th this apologize? is this is very new. <laughs> you did, Councillor Lucas did. This is very new to all of us. So I think questions are welcome. This is it's a new procedure. I apologize for apologizing. Uh, <laughs> just ask your question. <laughs> I want to be clear of uh, the comment to Councillor Alto. Uh, so the applicant that is at the table today was a month and a half before any other application in this 200 meter even put their application in. Is that my understanding? And and it's not, uh, for timing wise, um, say another application had theirs in first, but haven't completed the application because staff had questions. Who would be considered the first application? So if, I, if I'm on, I don't know, View Street in that area, and I actually put my application in before this application, 
but I had to answer a few more questions. Would I be considered still the first application in or not because I haven't completed and the applicant is in? The, the, the first application to submit sits at the top of the queue. That said, if the process to get them to committee takes longer, yeah. then, it is the, then, then, then another application could move forward. Uh, in their stead. So, you know, the, the intent here is we, we gave lots of um, uh, time prior to the uh, adoption of this policy for applicants to come in, meet with staff, get an understanding of what it is that they needed to provide before we finally took submissions. We've done everything that we can to do this. This is the fairest uh, sort of process that, that, that staff can undertake. We have n certainly no, uh, no, no preference for one application or another. It is simply what we need to do in order to process the application. Um, in order to move them forward. And if an applicant has asked, is asked for further information and questions and it takes them a month and a half or two months to go away, and in that time, another application is able to move its way through the process and get to committee of the whole and get to public hearing, then you know, uh, that, that, um, there's the potential that they could be approved beforehand. That said, that we have, as you can recall, the first two applications that came forward came forward within 200 meters of each other, they came forward together, and the recommendation to council was to defer consideration of the second one until they knew what was happening with the first one, uh, even though they were, they were right on, uh, on the heels of each other. So again, this is complicated, and staff are doing the best uh, that they can to help to move each of these processes forward, but again, we're, we're dealing with a range of different applicants who, in some cases, you know, we don't, we don't want to hold down the whole process because one applicant who happened to be at the front takes several months or a month to get back with some information. We're continuing to move the processes forward. Um, again, if 851, uh, let's say we have, get a situation where this is delayed and 851 comes forward, there's nothing stopping council from looking at that fact that there was a delay and perhaps looking at the approval of that second one, uh, in, you know, overriding the policy because of, again, because of extenuating circumstances uh, that, that come about because of the, the uniqueness of, of doing all of these applications all together. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, I see no further questions. Um, would anyone like to put the staff recommendation on the table? No one's very enthusiastic to move these, I notice. Okay, thank you. Councillor Alto, is there a seconder? Seconded by Councillor uh, Loveday. Discussion? Yes, Councillor Alto, and then Councillor Lucas. Uh, just very briefly, I think you were right in observing that none of us are very thrilled about moving any of these. However, since we have uh, done the work, and certainly our staff has done incredible work uh, in trying to create a, a reasonably fair regulatory system in the absence of direction of the appropriate authority, the federal government, I think we have to abide in general by our policies considering any extin um, extenuating circumstances, as staff have suggested. Uh, I will just note, although I am going to support this based on the policy, that uh, as each one of these comes forward, I am having increasing uh, degrees of concern about our first-past-the-post system uh, in this case. And so i um, trying to put some thought into uh, whether or not there's uh, any room here for us to uh, try and clarify that a bit, but obviously I don't, have, I don't want to do that on the fly. Uh, but just, just as a, a note that I think I, I will try and put some thought for the future into whether or not it's possible to make that more clear. But I will support this based on our existing policy. Thank you. Before I go to Councillor Lucas, who is next, um, Mr. Coates has some information about the sign. Well, thank you, Mayor Helps. Just for, uh, for yours and Council's information, um, staff have advised that the sign for this operation is fully compliant with the city's sign regulation provisions in the um, business regulation bylaw and, and just to touch on that quickly, it's um, the business name, and so the business name uses the word cannabis, for example, in this case, so that sign has been reviewed by staff and is considered fully compliant. Thank you. Councillor Lucas? Thank you, and I really want to thank staff. Um, I suspect uh, Councillor Thornton Joe is getting as many emails as I am um, as the downtown reps. Uh, I'm certainly hearing from businesses, how is this happening? How are, you know, is the simple question of how do you determine the 200 meters? But, you know, the questions that I'm receiving are ventilation, you know, to make sure there's no smells. How is this all going to work? Uh, will people be hanging around outside their doors? Will we have uh, bylaw officers to move people along? I mean, just so many questions. Signage, uh, how is that going to? And this is all new. So I certainly do appreciate all the support that I've been receiving from staff with the many questions um, that we are 
getting because it is new for all of us. So I just wanted to thank you for all the help uh, that I've been receiving. Thank you. Councillor Young? Well, it is new, but to some degree it was predictable that uh, the policy of the 200 meter exclusion zone, so to speak, uh, policy was going to create some issues. We, um, I am not comfortable um, defending our issuance of a business license um, on the grounds to to um, one operator and refusing it to another on the grounds simply that um, one operator's um, application was simpler or more complete and moved through the process more quickly. Um, I'm I'm not comfortable defending that as a as a policy, um, I think that um, we will, as I said before, I predict that we may well end up having to defend it in court simply because we know that um, some of the operators will not be uh, happy with our decisions. Um, but uh, I, I think that uh, we are... Um, I've, I've, I've said this before, I'll try not to uh, repeat too much, but uh, my, my refusal uh, of this one does not reflect on the merits or lack of merit of this particular operator submission, but rather on my concerns in principle with the process and, and the uh, concept we've adopted here. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Thornton, Joe. Uh, thank you. Um, I will support it uh, to go to public hearing, um, and I'm sure there'll be some more discussion at that point. Uh, but I did want to convey the uh, Downtown Residents Association's concerns about the 200 meter uh, aspect in that uh, in their calculation, th that could mean that uh, there could be up to 20 to 30 just in the downtown core, if not to adding Harris Green as well. So I guess my question to staff is if council should decide to um, amend it to increase the amount of meters, what would the process be? A motion of council uh, to revisit the policy is, you know, could be a, a notice of motion, I believe, could be provided at, at any time. Um, I think uh, the, 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 the key question, I think, for, for that staff would, would look for uh, in that would be what the, the ultimate intent of the policy um, would be to achieve. Um, the, the existing policy is really meant to um, uh, to, to disincentivize or, or, or dispel the sort of uh, amalgamation or the, the, the conglomeration of these different businesses altogether. So the creation of a, a pot block, uh, as you were, um, rather than the, the, the um, limitation of them within a neighborhood overall. Um, so, you know, the downtown core is our commercial core. It's the majority of our commercial um, floor space. So we, one would expect that there, there may be more of any type of commercial activity within the downtown core than other areas. Um, if the intent of the policy is really just to limit the number of these overall, then perhaps that, uh, you know, if, if that was the, the focus of the motion, then ca um, staff could provide uh, the, the best direction and best tools to do that. Because again, I think the, the uh, council struggling with the 200 meter boundary here um, it sort of highlights the fact that it's probably not uh, it's, it's, it is a tool, it's the best tool to limit uh, uh, 10 or 15 of these on one block. It's probably not the best tool to limit a total number of uh, shops citywide or within a particular uh, overall neighborhood. There are probably better um, better tools, policy tools that staff could recommend in order to do that. But again, the, the current thrust of the policy is to, to limit that uh, uh, amalgamation of a number of, or accumulation of a number of businesses on one block, let alone not necessarily limiting the total number in the downtown. The process would be that you would bring a motion to council asking for council to consider X meters instead of 200 meters. Oh, or in my understanding from Mr. Uh, Mr. Tinney or ask the staff to come back with uh, a report of mechanisms to limit the number of establishments in either the city in, in or the downtown. Yeah, that if, if, if that was the intent, then then I would suggest that the, the latter would be the, the, yeah. the, the better wording for, for staff. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any further discussion? Yes, Councillor Coleman. Thank you. I'm prepared to move this forward to a public hearing because I think it meets the test to go to public hearing. 
Um, I think the reason we were all cautious is uh, to, or reticent to, to move it in the first place is the conundrum of the federal uh, government not having set down the rules of engagement, if you will. Um, so we're moving forward, recognizing that the landscape's changing. Um, and we've focused in a lot on the 200 meter, uh, perhaps larger, perhaps smaller um, provisions. I am just as interested at the public hearing to hear <clears throat> the police statement. Um, I think that that's something that we should be uh, trying to capture for all these applications. And if we were to make it 300 or make it a, a upset number of establishments within the city, I assume that that would still be open to, um, if, if we hit the upset number, somebody could still say there are special circumstances and I wish to put this in front of council anyway, because it's policy. And, and so we need to think through that. And we have done that with liquor establishments in the past where um, I can think of one in James Bay, which was, I think, as the crow flies two meters too close, but we found that it was special circumstances and we chose to uh, go outside our regular policy. So I think that that will still be a conundrum for us in the future. But this meets the initial test of going to public hearing. And I still want to hear a whole bunch of other things before we make a, a decision at, at that public hearing. Thank you. And just uh, sometimes when things get said, they become taken as truth. Uh, we may or may not have any information from the police on any of these applications. So I just wanted to, to be really clear about that. Um, uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, thanks. Uh, next, we move on to item number uh, eight, um, having dispensed with item number seven uh, earlier in the morning as part of the consent agenda. And uh, item number eight A and eight B, uh, rezoning application and a development permit application with variances for 986, 988, and 990 Haywood Ave, uh, and associated technical official community plan amendment. Uh, and I will turn it over to our uh, capable staff team to walk us through the report. Thank you, Mayor Helps. Um, as I uh, mentioned, this is a rezoning and development permit application. This part of the presentation focuses on the rezoning aspect. The application is to increase the maximum density from 1.2 to 1 floor space ratio to 1.6 to 1 floor space ratio. A small portion at the rear of 986 Haywood Avenue, shown in red here, is currently zoned as R1B, single family dwelling district. And the proposal is also to, also to rezone this to the same density to allow multi-residential use. The site currently contains a single family dwelling at 986 Haywood Avenue and a duplex at 988 to 990 Haywood Avenue, shown in the bottom photo. This slide shows the immediate context. A triplex uh, to the north of Oliphant Avenue in the upper left, two-storey townhouses fronting Oliphant Avenue in the upper right, a four-storey condominium building to the southwest, which fronts Park Boulevard, and to the rear of the property are predominantly two-storey single-family dwellings, not shown on this slide. This photograph shows uh, in more detail.